Hi, and welcome back to Miller Music Studios TV. This is piano lesson number three. We'll be building a major scale. And let's go to the piano and learn. First of all, what's a scale? A scale is a pattern of notes, usually within an octave. So what's an octave? Do you know what the prefix oct, O-C-T, means? Think about octopus. That has eight legs. Or an octagon. That has eight sides. So an octave is the distance or interval of eight notes apart from each other. Here's an example. C is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I ended on a C. So an octave is the distance from C to C, and that would be up or down. So an octave is actually from one letter name to the same one. So D to D is an octave up, and D to D is an octave down. Why are scales important? Because composers usually choose their notes from a scale or scales of their choice when they're writing a piece of music that you're going to play. They might start by choosing their notes from one key and then change keys or modulate during the piece and usually return to the first key by the end of the piece. For my students, the way we tell what scale you're going to play for the judge for an adjudication exam like the Guild, first look at the key signature and then look at what note it begins and ends on. Usually that will tell you the scale and cadence to play. Consider the pentatonic scale. Penta means five. So it's a five note scale. Chinese music has often been based on this. How about the blues scale? We could play a riff or a little blues tune based on that scale. Do you notice the symbol flat, sort of like a little B? When you see that flat sign before a note, it means play the very next key to the left. That's a half step down. So if you have an E and they put a flat before it, you're going to play the E flat right there but it can also be white, because if you have an F, an F flat would be here. The other name is E for that key. You actually can have a double flat too, but that's in future lessons, so don't worry about it right now. Let's go to a chromatic scale. You play every key, which means we're going up and down by what we call half steps. A half step is the very next key up or down from a given note. To be a half step, it can be white to black, black to white, it could even be white to white, but never black to black, because there can be no key in the middle of a half step. Now you see a new symbol. It's a sharp. It looks a little like a slanted tic-tac-toe board or a number sign. In music notation, when you see a sharp before a note, that raises a key to the nearest one on the right, a half step up. So C would go to C sharp here. D goes to D sharp. E would go to E sharp here. Look at how an E sharp is actually another name for F. That's called enharmonic, so we call E sharp and F enharmonically the same. Just like you can have double flats, you can also have double sharps, but that's for another lesson. How about a whole tone scale? Sounds like outer space music or music for a science fiction movie. It has all whole steps. What's a whole step? It's two half steps. So if you have a half step plus another half step, you get a whole step, C to D. You notice it has one key in between. C sharp to D sharp has one white key in between. And E to F sharp has a white key in between. So a whole step is from one key to the next with one key in between. This finally brings us to major and minor scales. These are the most common scales composers draw their notes from when composing classical music. Let's take the major scale. It's made up of eight notes starting on the note that the scale is named and ending on the same note an octave higher or lower. For example, C up to C and back down again. That's a C major scale. It's made of two tetrachords joined by a whole step. Tetra means four. An accord is two or more notes played at the same time. Well, to be a tetrachord, it has to follow certain criteria or rules. First, it has to have four notes. Second, they have to be in alphabetical order. 
and the pattern has to be whole, whole, half. And we're going to play them with finger numbers two, three, four, five, no thumb. When building a major scale, you can start on any key, and as long as you build two tetrachords joined by a whole step, you'll get another major scale. If you start on a C, and you build the major scale, that's referred to as the key of C major. Well, this leads us to the term key signature. Just like each of us has a signature, which represents us to a bank on a check, signing a letter or anything, the key signature is what identifies a particular key. You find it written after the clef signs. So, the key of C major turns out to be no sharps and no flats. There are 15 major scales and we'll begin with the C major scale now. Okay, C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, E to F is a half step. So this is our first tetrachord. Now if we start a whole step higher, meaning we're going to skip a key, we're going to start on a G and up a whole step is A, a to B is another whole step, and B to C is a half step. So the end result of a major scale is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Okay, we're going to take the right hand first for thumb turns. There are eight notes in the major scale, and we have only five fingers on each hand. So since eight, take away five, is three, we're going to start with your thumb, or finger number one, you play one, two, three, put your thumb under, and then you have five more fingers to use. One, two, three, four, five. So that was one, two, three, slide your thumb under, two, three, four, five. If you start with your pinky or the fifth finger, you use all five fingers first. Five, four, three, two, one, and then you need three more, so you go over with your third finger and play three, two, one. Now the left hand is the same. If you start with your five, which that would be on the bottom. You're going to use all five fingers first. Five, four, three, two, one. You need three more, so go over with your third finger. Going down, we'll go one, two, three, slide your thumb under, and play all five fingers. One, two, three, four, five. The easiest way to play hands together is in contrary motion. You can go like this. One, two, three, slide thumb under, two, motion is not so easy and shouldn't be tried until you can play hands separately very securely. This is parallel motion. Practice hands separately and hands together using a metronome. A metronome is a device that ticks in a steady beat at a given tempo or speed. Every serious pianist should have one. This pendulum type is the best for a pianist because it's loud enough to hear over the piano and you can see it peripherally out of the corner of your eye. Start at 60 to the quarter note, and the numbers are here, so you'll be able to line up the top of the pendulum with the 60. Now, here we go. I will do um, parallel motion hands together, but at home, I think that you should do right hand alone, left hand alone, and then hands together. This is one octave in quarter notes. of our circus music duet. When, after you go after the second part, go to the group of two black keys to the left of that and make a backwards V and go black, white, black, white, black, white, black. Go to the right two black keys of the three black key group to the left of that and go black, white, black, white, black, white, black. Join them up. Black, 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 and then the ending again. 
over and over again on your computer. Let's do the whole thing now. your C major scale at whatever level you're at every day. Piano lesson number four will have the arts and crafts project I promised last lesson. I couldn't fit it on this one, sorry. But we'll be building our C major, minor, diminished, and augmented chords on there, and I'll show you how to play them in a fun way. Till then, happy practicing! <laughs>